Hello fantasy managers and welcome back for another video. My name's Jack and today we're going over our players to buy for the quarterfinals of World Cup Fantasy. Sorry we couldn't upload any round of 16 content. I uh, will be recapping how we got on in round of 16 in uh, this week's uh, team selection. And we are, of course, going to be posting videos for the semi-finals and finals of the World Cup as we get closer to the end of the tournament. As always, drop a like and subscribe if you're enjoying the World Cup fantasy-related content. And click the notification bell to stay up to date with all of our recent uploads. Also, check out our second channel, Footy Flare, where we've been posting World Cup and football-related content. And with that being said, let's jump into the video. So today I'm going to be recommending five players that you guys should consider having in your quarterfinals team for the World Cup. You do have quite a few free transfers available from the round of 16 to the quarterfinals. So here are five options that have been in good form so far this tournament. And a quick disclaimer, these are all players from teams that have already qualified and have their fixtures confirmed for the quarterfinals. The first one here is Cody Gakpo. He looks to be a great pick for the Netherlands, and he's got Argentina as his quarterfinal opponent, whose defense hasn't been the greatest so far this uh, tournament. They have still conceded goals, so hopefully Gakpo can continue his good form and pick up a fourth goal of the tournament. As in four matches for Netherlands, he's already recorded of three goals for them, making him one of the highest scoring players in World Cup Fantasy so far with 19 points. I really like Gakpo's price as well, as it does £7 million, he does allow you to spend extra money around the squad, especially when a lot of managers are going to be looking to the premium assets as we get uh, closer and closer to the final of the tournament, and more of those premium players from the better teams are looking to be higher selected. Gakpo, on the same point, could also be a good differential as well. If you're looking to spend a little bit less on that third forward pick, spend £7 million there, and then upgrade the defense or the midfield even further, that could be a good option, and with Gakpo's a relatively low ownership compared to some of the other more premium forwards. He could be a nice rank riser for World Cup Fantasy. Moving on, Bakayo Saka as well. He's been absolutely superb so far this tournament for England and could be a very nice pick in the midfield at £8 million right now. His ownership isn't massive compared to some of the other midfielders in the game and also some of the more premium options as well. And I really like his uh, good form throughout the tournament with three goals in three games. He's picked up 27 points for England, so absolutely superb. One of the highest scoring players in World Cup Fantasy as well. I believe he ranks third overall for total points, which is a very good output, especially for a play of just eight million pounds pretty much going toe to toe for Mbappe with uh, for points even though Mbappe is three and a half million pounds more expensive speaking of Mbappe England do play France in the quarterfinals which is of course a difficult fixture but I think something to note is that fixtures become less and less important now just because uh, nearly every single fixture is going to be difficult as the best teams only get through to the final stages so I wouldn't pay a massive amount of attention on the fixtures. Yes, it's still important, but at the end of the day, most teams are going to be having difficult matches. And France still have conceded goals. They conceded to Australia, and uh, England have been very good so far this tournament in scoring goals. But Kyle Saka has been heavily involved there. So he could definitely be a very nice pick for England at £8 million, and hopefully see England advance further in this tournament as well. Uh, moving on, Daily Blind. He's been absolutely excellent for Netherlands so far this tournament he did do very well in his most recent match uh, in the round of 16 for the Netherlands he picked himself up a goal and an assist which was massive for their win over the USA as Netherlands did win a 3-1 in this game it was a combination of uh, Blind and Dumfries that combined for a lot of goals for Netherlands in this game with Dumfries providing a goal and two assists Blind getting himself a goal and an assist so across the tournament Blind still has the same clean sheets as Dumfries with two and he only has one less attacking return as obviously Dumfries did record that extra assist in the most recent again for Netherlands. So for a player at half a million pounds cheaper than Denzel Dumfries, he could prove to be a nice value option and also a player with a lot lower ownership. If you're looking for a differential to Dumfries or you don't have quite enough money in the squad because you've gone with quite a few premiums up top already, I think Blind is a great way to cut costs in the team whilst also capitalizing on a good defense and a player with good attacking potential as well as he did show against the USA. He's got a difficult fixture though of Argentina as well. Their attack hasn't been blistering so far this tournament. They haven't scored a monster amount of goals and the Netherlands defense of course has recorded two clean sheets so far so there is the uh, occasional uh, probability of a clean sheet there but of course Blind can get forward as he showed against the USA and pick up goals assists there is multiple routes to returns there 
and a good uh, differential alternative to Denzel Dumfries if you can't quite afford him at six million pounds, as I still would slightly prefer Dumfries if you had the money in the bank over Blind, but I do still like him. Uh, Luke Shaw, another good defender pick. He's coming in at five million pounds and has recorded 21 points so far, which does make him one of the highest scoring defenders behind Dumfries and Blind as well, as both of those players have 27 and 24 points respectively. Luke Shaw has also provided an assist and has played in every game for England, so he's shown to be a consistent starter, got decent attacking potential as he already has that assist under the belt, and the England defence has shown that has been quite resistant throughout the tournament. They do have a very difficult task of France in the quarterfinals, who do have a very strong attack led by Mbappe, but we could see England potentially get a clean sheet in this one, and at £5 million, Luke Shaw could prove to be a nice value pick at the back, as even if he doesn't get a clean shit he can get forward and ship him with an assist he is on some set pieces for England as well so that can always help him out with his routes to returns and we did see him get a big goal in the Euros final as well where he snuck forward for England in the box so we can always arrive at the back post there so don't mind Luke short five million pounds in the defense Looking to the other player here, which could be great value in the Argentina attack, it is Julian Alvarez. He's coming in at just 6.5 million pounds and could be superb value. Once again, in a similar boat to Gakpo, if you're not looking for triple premium forwards and you want to spend a little bit less on that third forward pick, I really, really like Alvarez with a good fixture against Netherlands. This is probably as good as it's going to get in terms of our difficulty of fixtures throughout the quarterfinals, as Netherlands are definitely one of the weaker teams to have made it to the quarterfinals so far. And Alvarez has been firing recently for Argentina, as in his two most recent matches, he's recorded a goal in each of his last two, with uh, totaling up for two goals in the tournament, and recording 13 points in just two sides for Argentina. So definitely a very productive player when he's been on the pitch. He's getting into some good positions, the main central striker for Argentina right now, and with Netherlands as that fixture in the quarterfinals, a very good opportunity for him to make it uh, three goals in his last three games for Argentina, as he has proved to be quite a nice value pick. I have seen quite a few managers with him in the teams already looking to find that value. And if you don't have Messi in your teams for whatever reason and you don't have the funds to get him in, Alvarez is still a good way to match him for points and tick off the Argentina attack at the same time. Thanks for watching today's quarterfinals players to buy for World Cup Fantasy. If you did like the list of players that we provided, drop a like and subscribe. If you want to see more World Cup Fantasy content, and click the notification bell to stay up to date with all the semi-finals and finals content that will be coming your way fairly shortly. As always, check out the second channel, Footy Flare. We've been posting World Cup and football-related content over there. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.